Opposing Force is a bit of a special game to me, as believe it or not, I had spent over infinite years on it when I was below the age of 10. Seriously, on my old Steam account, which sadly no longer exists, I had over 100 hours on Op4 somehow. So, with my innate know-how of the game, I presume that this challenge would be a quite of a cakewalk, and let's say it was a little bit of it. And before we start, I would like to mention the author of the mod, NF3C, who reskinned the knife to fists, and the person that made the Intense Force add-on that I'll be running the game on to spice up the gameplay. Intense Force is an add-on that adds an alternative attack for the knife most importantly, adds attacks for some opponents and so on. Simply put, it puts opposing force into 21st century. Also before we start, I would like to notice that only 2.5 of you lot are subscribing to me, so, uh, you know, you could press the button, it would make you happier, and if you are not going to do that, I'm going to find you and force you to watch Batman and Robin. So, yeah, subscribe to me, otherwise you are going to suffer. So, with that being said, it's fisting time. We land rather fly with the boots of Adrian Rocky Shepard, a 22-year-old HCU Marine sent to Black Mesa to control the situations, as the latter is quite unpleasant. Soon enough we are being shut down by some flying mantas, and our squad get eviscerated by some angry otherworldly visitors. During this debacle I also managed to pick up a shotgun, but... Don't worry about this, I'm not going to use it, it's just a muscle memory. We land in the hospital and we learned that we suffered 28 stab wounds, and thus our pre-CV has been stripped away and patched up. After getting it back, we meet the security guard of the place who tells us to keep us safe or something. I didn't exactly pay attention. After that finding the back, we come across the first puzzle of the game, the deadly laser room, which... Honestly, why is it even here? N not really, what's the point? Like, it, it serves zero purpose, like, what's the point? And as the pipe wrench, a tool that I picked up previously, is not composed of my nerves and tissues, I'm in no position of using it, making me skip this puzzle via chair that I took from the room where Otis was minding his business. Finally on the surface, I obtain Doomfist and can wreak hell on some innocent handcrafts among things. Soon after, I also get acquainted with some Romanians and I am forced to put them down, but not before they present their new abilities. The first one is an attack that is similar to the ones that I use in episodes, that being a stomp which deals AoE damage, and the second is way, way more vile, as the modders restore the ability to resurrect their fallen comrades, which makes them sound bad, however, due to numbers of Romanians, or rather lack thereof, it isn't much of an issue as much as you might think. Soon after, we encounter a radio which informs us that the military is very gentlemanly and always pulls out. <coughs> I mean, they are retreating from Black Mesa because more casualties. My brother in Christ, right now you are containing the worst invasion that had graced this very earth. Any sacrifice and casualty is worth the deal. Anyway, we descend into the tunnels where we fight even more Romanians and we come across a very threatening cutscene which forces us to stand in place for like two minutes or something. Whoa, very scary. Once that is done, we are allowed to move upwards, and then we are rescued by some guy in a suit from an eternity of sitting in one chamber filled with electrified toxic waste. We come to the elevator and come across another room filled with electrified toxic waste, but this time around, we have suicidal headcrabs. Eventually, we land in the sewers, and this is where the challenge officially ends, as I need to make this robot move. And to do so, I need to destroy some crates, which are literally impossible to destroy via fists, so... Um well, let's assume that Shepard is more badass than all those edits made by 13-year-olds and somehow destroyed those crates with sheer willpower. No, no, I totally did not use any grenades to do so. What are you on about, comrade? I killed 12 dumbass scientists and not one of them fought back. This sucks. Oh shit, squad, we've got Freeman! Welcome to We Are Pulling Out, where HCU is... Pulling out! But before that we have to first survive the Black Mesa's wild ride, consisting of standing in one place for like 5 minutes while doing nothing outside of dodging Romanian attacks. Eventually, the wild ride ceases its existence, and we are allowed to move onwards, meeting Otis, fighting zombies, zombarinos, and zomboids. Also, we have an encounter with an absolutely amazing new creature, never seen before nor seen properly. Man, I wonder if we are going to ever see it again. Mmm. 
After that we find an elevator of doom, which is straight up impossible to get past on hard, so I unfortunately had to lower the difficulty and make a run towards the vent. In the base of my compatriots we found a guy who says the message from the first game, which makes me believe that... Oh my god guys, I think Half-Life and Opposing Force might be playing out at the same time. Whoa! What's next? Fredbear caused the bite of 87? Impossible, I tell you. With that being said, the government man closes the gate on our nose, which is so rude that Romanians appear and make a door themselves. We get into it and emerge in the new chapter, Missing in Action, which is more of the same, honestly. That being walking across weird paths of Black Mesa, like giant vents, like, what's the point of them? Um, anyway, we descend and appear in the moist part of the Black Mesa, apparently where they make burgers or something. We encounter the inflected employees who grew so fat that they started to mutate and grow fat out of their upper torso as a form of protection, so like... Americans. Uh, they are more durable, they are faster, they are more lethal uh, than their lesser mutated compatriots, however, they are using recycled both with AI and it's really easy to bait their attacks out and then give them a gift of a good old Sidewinder, if you know what I mean. After that forsaken place we meet a fellow soldier who tells us that those things are going to kill all of us and I'm pushed to believe that he's talking about the garage doors and how dangerous they are as, you know, he's presumably crawling out of a sentient garage door. Truly, Black Mesa is one of the places of all time. After that incident, we are introduced to the new enemy that also uses recycled Bullsquid AI, the Pit Drones. Those aren't particularly painful to deal with given that you 1v1 Bruh. them, however, you never 1v1 them. Indeed, they do hunt in packs, making them a nightmare to tackle. Eventually, though, I found a way to fight them. I walk in circles, and when I charge the attack up, I move towards them and punch them hoping for one hit kill. Rinse and repeat until they all see the underside of grass. Ooh. After that, I might or might have not destroyed our laser mine with a grenade, you can't prove anything to me, and move on to find additional two grunts who apparently have sit in this maintenance area for a good couple of days now, which overall is impressive to be honest. We make our way into the elevator and towards the next chapter, Friendly Fire. This chapter opens up with Romanians cosplaying as vandals or other groups of mayhem fans. Point is, hits come bad, hurts a lot, which means that this section is a quick saving galore, especially the part where Elian Grat teleported in along with some Romanians. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, he didn't teleport, he fell from the ceiling for some reason. That being said, the AI companions that the game gave me were a little godsend, honestly. Outside of that, we also had this weird section with generators and electrified toxic waste, because it's opposing force, one of its traits is having electrified toxic waste everywhere. Anyway, I am forced to use small arms to once again uh, destroy a electric panel, otherwise I would just die and, you know, kind of softlock the game. And also, I kind of killed the grunts that were on the other side. I tested later on this section and uh, with some trial and error I'm pretty sure I could probably get past it. Maybe with lower difficulty. M maybe. I'm not entirely sure. Hey, remember how I said that his gun is a bad and an unfun mechanic to play against? Well, how about two maps that are literally with them, no? Well, fuck you, because the game introduces Black Ops, the cover-up, to cover-up, to cover-up, the cover-up. In comparison to Half-Life Grunts, uh, which they are based on, they don't use shotguns, instead one, literally one Black Ops guy used a sniper, they don't communicate over voice comms, and courtesy of Intense Force, they also have an ability to throw flashbangs, which proved to be a blessing in disguise, as uh, the AI is locked into a quite a long animation while throwing the said grenade, which makes closing the gap easier. After the first skirmish with them, we get the engineer up and running again, thanks to the non-existent reserve of the medic that I've encountered earlier, and we all proceed to the door to the metro once over again. Uh, what is unfortunate is the another use of for a firearm to get the rest of the dudes to follow me into the next map because bro, trust me, I will need every single gun under the sun to pass through the next map. What is so bad about it you say? Mm, let's count, you have one, two, well, three sections that are filled with hit scanners. Not only grounds which are problematic in this section due to the close nature of it, but there are also women scattered around the place. And this time around, for the first time in months, I have the means to fight them. And by that I mean I have those guys who will shoot them up. 
Uh, after getting bullied by those individuals, I finally gave up and deemed that this challenge is impossible. On hard. And thus I lowered difficulty to medium. On this difficulty is way, way, way better as the assassins don't turn invisible and they couldn't delete my squad that easily. It was pretty infuriating, although I finally made it in the end. And hell, uh, in the end there were two guys that had survived, which I'll call a win. I opened the door forward, followed the train tracks and welcomed a Black Ops guy with a solid face punch. W wait a minute, is that... Is that Freeman they're talking about? Oh, it's my lucky day. I'm going to beat this guy's ass so hard. Hey, get back here, you big orange fuck! Oh my god, no, no, I'm in Brazil, no! Oh wait, it was just one map and it's not even that long. Eh, whatever. Welcome to Crash Death, a chapter where nothing interesting happens. First of all, you escort a scientist and encounter a bull squid, which thanks to intense force gained a new attack, which is spitting, but lingering. And that's literally the only reason why I've mentioned bull squids in this video, outside of haha XYZ uses his AI. After crawling in vents filled with pit drones, we find a teleporter which teleports us, shocking I know, to a nearby water tank where we find a lot of zomboids which get fisted by Shepard. Also shout out to that falling headcrab, really impressive that a newly introduced species to the earth ecosystem already began to find its niche. After that I am once again forced to use mind force to destroy the panel which that prevents me from advancing and we come across a shock trooper who are once again reusing AI of bulls... No, wait, they actually don't, they use the human grunt AI. Uh, so Shrug Troopers aren't exactly mind-blowing enemies. As I've mentioned above, they use human grunt AI with similar tactics, attacks, and the only real difference is that they are more durable and have spore grenades instead of, well, normal grenades. And just like High Found, you can where it is weapon, however, it's infinitely more useful compared to high fund, and no, I'm not going to do fields, field intensity shock roach only. Please no. I, actually, you know what, if you want that, comment blue shift bad down in the comments so I know is, it, that someone actually wants to watch that. Lo and behold, we find ourselves in the next chapter, Precarious Reality, which is an equivalent to questionable ethics of the original Half-Life. You get implications that Black Mesa had been experimenting on Zen Fauna. However, while this has been done somewhat subtly in the original, in here, the subtlety is on the levels of an average disco soundboard. In here, we are also introduced to the final race X monster, that being the Vortigore, who is basically a stereotypical embodiment of American. They are fat, move slow, and are easy to bug out. And since this is the first encounter with it, I guess I'm just going to beat the shit out of it. There you go. Moving on, we find the other biological weapon, the Infant Shock Troop, aka the Spore Launcher, which, as the name implies, shoots spores which behave a lot like the rocket launcher from the original Doom, as if you point at the enemy to lead them or severely damage him. A couple of rooms later, we stumble across a message left for Walter, which informs us that the Black Mesa had successfully detached the barnacle out of its point of origin, and we are allowed to take it as Walter. Well, let's just say that he has bigger fishes to fry. Or rather cook if you know what I mean. And the unfortunate truth is that this is where technically the challenge ends, as moving forwards becomes impossible without the grappling hook. However, just for the sake of the good old show must go on, we will ignore it and pretend the barnacle god is, uh, I don't know, an extension of Shepard's hand or something. After that we get into more rooms, this time populated mostly by race X creatures, and we finally get 
out of this sector into the pitworm's nest. This is the big enemy stands in my way and I need to use puzzles in order to kill it chapter akin to Blast Pit of the original game. However, here pitworm is way more animated compared to the tentacles as well as easier to kill and honestly I kinda lack things to write about this section outside of the fact that you can die of heart attack when you leave the trash compactor, which I always kinda found funny. You know how it goes, you need to get the gearbox and valve powered up, enable steam vent and you know, you can press the bottle which makes the pitworm die and then you can extend the bridge to the next chapter. Funnily enough, I did that too fast the first time around, forcing me to reload the game for some reason. Time for the next chapter, Foxtrot Uniform. This one, as well as the next one, the package, are the equivalent of surface tension chapter from the original game. We found a uh, M249 saw, which is basically SMG, but good and without a grenade launcher. I caught her a funny bug which makes this Black Ops dude disappear only to reappear, it's kinda odd. And then we find two marines that tell us that the only sniper in Black Mesa research facility has pin them down and with our help they have a chance to break out of the sections which harkens back to the surface tension strip mine room where if you explode one all explode in one big fireball. We also get our hands on the sniper rifle, long overdue in my opinion. M24 is basically a his conversion of the crossbow, allowing you to reliably one-shot most of the regular enemies granted you aim for the head. At the end of the sections we go into the storage facility, which lead us to sewers, uh, which houses vorticors for some reason. Those combined with the fact that it's a very confined space doesn't make a fun time, however, it doesn't stop me from going berserk onto them, especially given that I'm on sure if devs actually intended to play like me and preferring to bash their brains in. Next we get into this interesting room, which indefinitely spawns pit drones, up to four of them if I recall correctly. Uh, the trick here is to close the doors and that's it. Hell, you can even skip this entire section if you so wish. After all, nothing will stop you from entering another sewer filled with vortigors, but this time around with their kids! Finally though, we are reunited with our comrades who tell us that the race X are coming out of the damn walls and we need to get to the dam. Yes, the same one from the surface tension, back in its full glory. But before that we need to break through a battalion of shock troopers who are determined to stop us and I gotta admit, they do that job pretty well, although eventually after smart management of my allies health, I made my way to the dam where... Why is Gark tied up there? More importantly, how the hell did they tie it up without being burnt to death? Uh, whatever, let's just blow it up. Hello guys, not the Gev here. Welcome to Foxtrot Uniform 2, Electric Boogaloo, also known as the Package. In here we do the exact same thing as the last time, but with heavier ordnance, as the game allows us to use a 50 cal as well as a mortar. And yes, mortar is within the rule set as it's a hard requirement to pass through this section due to the lack of explosives. The next section involves a chopper, a chopper battle in Race X, and guess what? The rules from Surface Tension about not having to destroy any airborne targets still applies here. Actually scratch that, if you go into that vent the pilot will just be, alright I'm out and just kills himself for you. Uh, very convenient honestly. The last section of this chapter is the garage, where Black Ops is fighting Race X. Here I basically made a mad dash towards the vents and did the same thing as I did in Forget About Freeman. That is to wait for one faction to win and then finish them off. Next garage map is a bit interesting as you can trick Black Ops into coming to you in piecemeal and you can knock them out like that. Also, before Bunny lets us in, he wants to defuse a bomb, which we had heard about from Otis that I kind of forgot to mention. Oops. Anywho, we go in, deliver a falcon punch to the both of men in black and defuse the bomb only for Jimin to reactivate it. Lovely. Welcome to the final chapter, Worlds Collide. This chapter, especially the first map of it, is a lovely tribute to Plutonia Experiment, as it is a hit gun hell. Your only bet to survive out of this is to run and hope that they won't get you. During my first time, I managed to get into a 50 cal emplacement and managed to eliminate most of my opponents. However, I got killed via flashbang induced head trauma, and I'm not joking. On my next attempt, I aimed to straight up ignore all the black ops and aimed to make a wild dash towards the next section. In those couple of tries I got lucky and the soldier that was waiting for me blew himself up with a grenade, making my life a lot easier, but not easy enough, as the next section is, uh, to say plainly, as painful as jumping off a moving train, not that I know anything about it. There are two black ops, two of them you meet 
feet as soon as you get into the room, which I was able to dispatch only because one threw a flashbang and the other went further into the storage area. The other two are hiding near the end and basically have you zeroed in as soon as you enter the, this little packing area, which, as you guessed it, made this section a quick saving galore. The final encounter with Black Ops is quite a spectacle as I waited for the two to wipe themselves out and... Then I jumped into a sack of crates which, and made a wild dash towards the door, which the security guard was kind enough to open. In short, this chapter was hell and I don't want to do this ever again. And this is where my adventure ends, as it is actually impossible to beat up Gene Worm, the final boss with fists, as it insta-kills you ev the moment you close the gap on it, so yeah. as. This is as far as you can go without using anything but fists and a barnacle gun. Anyway, that was Opposing Force and I hope you are satisfied with the end results, because I am not. Until Randy just suddenly, I don't know, gets the Opposing Force source code back and, I don't know, implements a QTE event where you beat up Gene Worm, I'm not satisfied with Opposing Force at all. Anyway, till next time guys.